Check it out, Startup Nation. I know many of you are trying to improve your marketing performance, right? You have your business or your e-commerce store, and you're trying to increase that brand awareness. No worries. I got you. You should listen to the brand new Keep Optimizing podcast. That's optimizing with an S and not a Z. It's a marketing podcast that will provide you with not only the latest tips and advice in the game, but also you will hear from experts in their field when it comes to email marketing, SEO, and more. This is a must-listen-to podcast for my e-commerce entrepreneurs. It's hosted by Chloe Thomas, who is a 15-year marketing expert, best-selling author, and award-winning podcast host. It's already a top 20 marketing podcast in seven countries, so clearly you're going to get amazing value every episode. So as you can see, Stout Nation, you're in good hands with my girl CT. So listen and subscribe to the Keep Optimizing podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere you like to get your favorite podcast. You can also get more information at keepoptimizing.com. The link is there in the show notes. It's time to be about that life, the startup life. Here's your host, Dominic Lawson. All right, Startup Nation, so I hope you're ready to receive some value today. My name is Dominic Lawson, and this is The Startup Life, the show for entrepreneurs and career-minded professionals. You know, Startup Nation, in the wake of COVID, pursuing a different career or starting your own company never looked so formidable or so tempting. What if this year you looked past the obstacles to go for your dream undaunted? Well, Startup Nation, we have the perfect, an absolute superstar here on the show for you today. She is an entrepreneur, keynote speaker, mother, and author. She has many accolades, including Fortune's Most Powerful Women Entrepreneurs and Forbes 40 Women to Watch Over 40. She has appeared on the Today Show, CNBC, Fox Business, Bloomberg, ABC, and Extra TV. She is the founder and CEO of Hint and grew it to be the fastest growing and number one flavored water company in America, currently estimated to be over $200 million in business. She is also the author of Undaunted, Overcoming Doubts and Doubters. She is the one and only Kara Golden. KG, how are you, ma'am? I'm good. How are you? Uh, Thanks uh, for inviting me. Oh, no worries. No worries. So we're definitely excited to have you on the show. We definitely just want to kind of dive in and and get started. So I want to ask you uh, about, you know, your origin story a little bit. Kind of share with me, you know, what was Kara like as a kid? I know you are are the youngest of five and and you often talk about how you had to be persistent uh, as a kid. Did that persistence ever get you in trouble or kind of find you uh, in kind of a weird way? Kind of talk about that a little bit. Yeah. So obviously the, the, youngest of five. Um, my poor parents had, had seen and <laughs> been through plenty. Right. I had two very naughty brothers too, which I think helped, um, really make me out to be, uh, a lot easier because, um, they were always getting into some kind of trouble. Right. And so, um, yeah, I mean, also I, I would say my parents also were, um, were a little bit older. I mean, not so old today, but they were, they were 40, um, when they actually had me, gotcha. which back then was like, you know, no one did that. Right? right. So I had like the oldest parents on the block. So they were a little tired. Like they were just like, just don't get in trouble, whatever you do. I mean, that was <laughs> sort of the message when I ran out the door. Gotcha. Um, so, so definitely independent, um, but also, you know, really happy sort of to, to be as independent and, and really, you know, leading, leading a life of, of trying things. I mean, that was like constantly, you know, trying things. I would say my dad had told all of us kids that we really needed to be playing sports at all times. Mm. And, and so that was like a rule in our house, like just like exercise and, you know, was constantly like, you know, you just had to be doing something. So all of us were, you know, there were, it was rare that we actually had dinner together because somebody always had practice and, you know, there were like team stuff going on constantly. And, and, um, and so I think the, the interesting thing is, is that sports don't run the same sport doesn't run year round. So there was always kind of like, you know, this other sport that you'd be doing. And, you know, for me, if I wasn't doing gymnastics, I was doing softball or running or, you know, something. And I think it was like, 
that was like the place where I found that I would have appreciation for people who were better than me and, you know, right. And, you know, and kind of like how there's certain sports that are like teams, there's other that are like individual drive and things like that. So, um, so that was a bit about it. I also had older brothers and sisters. We almost like had two families because my um, brother and sister were 15 and 16 years older than me. Right. And, um, and so they were like having jobs when I was like in diapers and I didn't understand why I couldn't have a job too. Cause they had more <laughs> money than I did to go gotcha. to the mall. And so I had my first job in a toy store. Um, it, my, uh, you know, I babysat and did some other things, but my real kind of first job official job where they took taxes was at a toy store um in scottsdale where i grew up and um i got the job when i was 14 and my dad i remember my my mom and dad were just like wait what you got a job when you're 14 years old and right. like that's crazy and they just laughed about it they just thought it was like kind of funny and i was just initially working on sundays and doing the cash register but soon you know because i was a kid i was really good at understanding what products we should have in the toy store. So they kind of, the woman, Nancy, who owned the toy store asked me to actually be the buyer and like help her do the buying. And so like, she would teach me about, you know, profit and loss and, you know, margins and, you know, markups and uh, like all of this, like lingo that you don't necessarily, or maybe you learn it in school, but you just don't really know what to do with it. And so again, I, I, Uh, like I had no idea what I was doing and I was actually very happy to tell everybody I had no idea what I was doing, but I was trying and I just thought it was like, I just always had a good time doing it. Gotcha. Thank you for sharing that. And you know, it makes sense that, you know, you, uh, you and your uh, siblings play sports. Cause I know you in the book, you talk about your dad was a, I think he coached what football and was it tennis? Was it football and tennis? Football and and baseball. He played tennis, but he was, yeah, he was constantly like, you know, coaching and, and, um, but you know, more for the boys teams than for, for like the girls teams. But I think for, I think for me, it also like, it was something that he was also super passionate about. And although he was super busy, he made time for it, you know? And I think like, that's something else as, you know, like a a lesson learned that, you know, you always, you always give the, the work to the busiest people, right? Because they'll figure out if they're really like interested and passionate about it, that they'll figure out a way to slot it into their schedule. For sure. For sure. Thank you for sharing that. And, and, you know, you, you said a couple of things that really, uh, that really kind of stood out. You you talked about, you know, when playing sports, you kind of find out people who, you know, who may be better than you and something. And we, we talk about that in entrepreneurship all the time where, you know, the, the classic saying, if you're the smartest person in a room, you need to go find another room or another circle, uh, and stuff like that. But one of the things that you just talked about and you talk about uh, in your book, and once again, Startup Nation, that book is Undaunted, Overcoming Doubts and Doubters. That book is out today, Startup Nation. We have a link there in the show notes for easy access uh, to purchase that book. But one of the things that kind of resonates uh, with me is that like you are not afraid to ask questions. You are not afraid to say, I don't know. Can I talk about that a little bit and how that has served you so well in business and beyond? Yeah, I mean, I think sort of, you know, just talking about my experience and, and some of these different roles and coming into them pretty young. I mean, I just like, I think that there's this expectation for so many people to just, you know, they get hired because they're, you know, they know it all. right? Right. And but I sort of went out, went about it in a little bit different way. And, you know, wanting a job because I just thought like, Oh, it'd be so fun to work there. Like I followed, you know, brands or like the actual role. Um, what I've learned, you know, along the way too, is that I'm a builder. And typically when you're jumping into companies or you're an entrepreneur and you're starting your own company, you know, you're building things. And so I was always constantly like when you're actually building things so often you don't actually have all the answers. right? Right. And so so I think not being afraid and always asking like questions was always just something, you know, that I did. And like I said, maybe it started with sports where like I would jump in and try new things just because it was, you know, like the only thing on the calendar during that time of year was like this type of sport. And so I would just like jump in and start, 
you know, trying, right? And right. and not be afraid to sort of say, well, how does that work exactly? And so I think that's carried over to pretty much every role that I've had. And I think it's just something that is just really important for people to remember that it's like, you know, it's okay to actually be transparent, authentic. Um, you know, even when you're the big CEO of a company and you're leading, when you don't really understand um, you know, what's in front of you, like a pandemic, I think actually right. sharing, um, you know, things like, okay, it's tricky and, you know, but here's what I think we should do. I think like, that's okay. Right. That actually shows that, you know, you're an authentic leader, which I think is so important in today's day and age. For sure. You know, and, and speaking of that authentic leadership, you know, and I was going to ask you about this later, but since we're already here, you know, I was actually on your Facebook page and you and you have a video there where you talked about where you went into uh, your your local kind of neighborhood target and uh, and something that you kind of discovered there that there was no product there. And you and you talked about what you did next. Kind of share that story and uh, something that we can all learn from that story, if you don't mind, Kara. Yeah. So at the beginning of, you know, the pandemic and right. in the U.S. at least was mid-March mm-hmm. and, you know, went into target stores and saw that we were out of stock on our product. And, you know, we typically have like you know, I don't know, 15 feet, 15, 16 feet of space in Target stores. And um, we did, this was on March 13th. And over that weekend, the 14th and 15th too, I was just like visiting all these stores, not just Target, but other stores. And we were out of stock on product. We didn't have it in the back room, um, you know, which as I was mentioning to somebody earlier today, when I was getting asked about this too. It's Mm -hmm. like, you know, that's a great thing, like to actually see that people are buying your product, but when there's no more stock and you know, you have some in your warehouse and for some reason it's not getting on the shelf, it's a frightening feeling, right? right? Like what is going on here? And so it, what was happening was that people were hoarding the product, right? Consumers were scared. And so they were, you know, buying lots of product and then, um, they ultimately, um, were having challenges because they were, I mean, these grocery stores had never seen a situation like a pandemic either where, you know, it was like every category was getting, you know, basically out of stock. And so, um, and so basically we, you know, made the decision that we would call all the buyers and make sure that, um, they had, uh, the option to actually get a truckload of our product in order to help them um, fill the shelves. And, you know, that app, that decision actually helped us to stay in the game because so many people were, you know, going through the regular channels and, you know, and like at the end of the day, the grocery buyers just, they just wanted stuff to sell so that they could stay in business. right? Right. And they didn't, you know, they were not moving. And so, just by moving and being scrappy and, you know, and starting to think like, how do we solve the problem as an entrepreneur? Mm -hmm. um, We were not only able to sort of, um, you know, get our product back on the shelf and sell more products, but also, um, but also like, we gain space right. in all of these stores as well. Gotcha. You know, and, and it really just speaks to that whole store just really speaks to, you know, cause anybody, like you said earlier, you know, will be just ecstatic. Like, Oh, they, you know, they're buying the product and stuff like that. But you saw the other side of it. And that's one of the things we always talk about here on the startup life is finding that balance. Like, yes, being sold out is great, but now you see the other problem that kind of comes with it. So I appreciate you sharing that with us. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. For sure. And earlier you talked about roles. You talked about, uh, you know, uh, uh, working at the toy store and, you know, you've worked at CNN and time and, uh, you were the VP of electronic commerce, uh, shopping and, uh, at AOL, you know, kind of talk about some of those things. Uh, you know, you talked about learning, you know, profit and loss and stuff like that at the toy store, but talk about some of the others, uh, other th- items you've learned uh, on your path to entrepreneurship that has been very beneficial, uh, to you running Hint. Yeah, I mean, I I think what I I talk about, and you know, I have a I have a book coming out right. um, soon called Undaunted. It's uh, comes out October twentieth. Undaunted, overcoming mm-hmm. doubts and doubters, and I I really talk about this realization that um, you know, no matter what you do, like no one can take that away from you, right? Like, right. and I think that's true 
and business too. So there's no reason why you can't move forward and maybe take some risks and do things that you, um, you know, that maybe you fear a little bit right. because all of those roles, you've learned something along the way. And maybe it's like not in the same industry, but maybe you're actually bringing something to an industry that actually needs some kind of innovation and doing things differently. And, and so for example, I mean, when my first job at time magazine, I was in circulation, it was like one step above the mailroom. Um, you know, as I've shared with people, it's like, um, you know, that was not a sexy job to be in, you know, it was like those stupid blow in insert cards that go into magazines. Right. But what I learned at that role was all about consumers and what mm. consumers respond to and what right. kind of messaging, what kind of pricing. And so fast forward many years later, um, our direct to consumer business is over 55% of our overall business. It's hands down the largest direct to consumer business in beverage today. Right. I mean, everybody, when they talk about having, you know, the ability for consumers to buy online in the beverage industry, they're talking about uh, Amazon. And so while that is one way that our consumers can get our product actually having that relationship with the consumer directly was something that I not only learned at AOL, which is where I was at before and running e-commerce and shopping partnerships, but also at something, you know, which was my first job. Like right. that was a lot of years ago. But I, as I tell people like, you know, like your journey includes everything that you've done. Even the things that you hated, even the things that you were, you know, trying to figure out, like, why am I here? Like, figure out what are the things that you're learning and stay there as long as you're learning. And so that's another thing that I talk about in the book, too, right. that it's like, you know, people will say to me, should I go? Should I stay? You know, should I go start a startup? And I'm like, I, I don't know your world that you're living in. I mean, my dad had founded a brand inside of a large company. Um, called Healthy Choice. Right. And for my dad, he had, you know, five kids and, you know, he wanted all of us to go to college. And, you know, it was just, and for him, like he wasn't going to leave his job because he, you know, really had like this financial responsibility to make sure that his kids, you know, got out the door. And again, he drove that. Like it wasn't anybody other than himself that was sitting here saying, you know, this is what I want. But it's just a great example of, Everyone's going on their own journey, and I think that that's important for everybody to, you know, really, um, really, you know, understand. For so, sure. all right, Startup Nation. So we're gonna go ahead and take a quick break. We gotta pay some bills. Once again, my name is Dominic Lawson, and you're listening to the Startup Life. Check it out, Startup Nation. I know many of you are trying to improve your marketing performance, right? You have your business or your e-commerce store, and you're trying to increase that brand awareness. No worries. I got you. You should listen to the brand new Keep Optimizing podcast. That's optimizing with an S and not a Z. It's a marketing podcast that will provide you with not only the latest tips and advice in the game, but also you will hear from experts in their field when it comes to email marketing, SEO, and more. This is a must-listen-to podcast for my e-commerce entrepreneurs. It's hosted by Chloe Thomas, who is a 15-year marketing expert, best-selling author, and award-winning podcast host. It's already a top-20 marketing podcast in seven countries, so clearly you're going to get amazing value every episode. So as you can see, Stoddard Nation, you're in good hands with my girl, CT. So listen and subscribe to the Keep Optimizing podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or anywhere you like to get your favorite podcast. You can also get more information at keepoptimizing.com. The link is there in the show notes. Oralex powers this episode of the Startup Life. Startup Nation, as a podcaster, radio host, and business owner, I know a thing or two about the need for your message to come through clearly to your target audience. The last thing you want when trying to close a big deal over the phone or giving a sales presentation in your conference room is to have the person you are talking to be distracted by either the fact that you sound like you're in a warehouse or an outside noise like a fire truck. Trust me, Startup Nation. 
I know this all too well from experience. And that is why Oral X has your back. Oral X Acoustics creates professionally tested products that you can trust in a commercial space or at home. Better office acoustics improves intelligibility when video conferencing or generic conversation reduces stress and helps build a proactive work atmosphere. From a home studio for my content creators to your office space downtown, your gear performs better in an acoustically treated room. Trust me, you are in good hands with Oralex as they are the number one brand in acoustics, providing trusted solutions for over 40 years. Also, you can download the Oralex Acoustic Treatment mobile app in the Apple or Google Play Store to give you specifically designed and instantaneous recommendations for various room types. Go to Oralex.com and use the promo code STARTUP in all caps for 10% off your entire order. The link is there in the show notes if you are listening to the replay on the podcast. So if you are ready to stop sounding like you're having a sales meeting in a sports arena, go with Oralex. Professional audio made simple. Tresta powers this episode of The Startup Life. Okay, Startup Nation, I want to talk to you about our sponsor, Tresta. Tresta is an app for iPhone and Android that lets you do business calling and texting from anywhere. I know so many entrepreneurs that are still using their their personal phone number for business calls. It can get complicated drawing the line between your personal and professional life. Startup Nation, this is the best business phone app out there. Whether you just need a business phone number or if your team is ready for a complete business phone system, Tresta is totally flexible and can grow with your business. And it's all unlimited. Calling, texting, and all of the powerful call management features like auto attendance, call recording, user groups, and more for just $15 per user per month. With Tresta, there's no contract and you don't need any special hardware, just your smartphone you're already using. Tresta is easy to configure so you can set everything up yourself, all online avoiding all the hassle and high overhead costs of setting up a traditional business phone system, which is important because as entrepreneurs, we are always trying to cut cost and time. They're often a 30-day free trial so you can see if Tresta's virtual phone system is right for you. Communicate smarter and more efficiently with Tresta. Start now at Tresta.com forward slash Startup Life. That's T-R-E-S-T-A dot com forward slash Startup Life. The link is there in the show notes if you're listening on the podcast. Tresta, business communication simplified. All right, Startup Nation, welcome back as we continue our conversation with today's guest here on The Startup Life. For sure. No, I, I appreciate that. And, and it's also important to own that journey uh, as yeah. well, because I know a lot of times people just say, oh, you know, I just, you know, I, like I do have this idea, but I don't know. I don't know if it's going to work. But, you know, sometimes you just got to you just got to do that. And in the book, you talk about like how, you know, entrepreneurship really is just kind of like, you know, uh, just going for it. Really, you actually have a quote. It, it's missing me right now. But you have a quote where it's kind of like just jumping off a cliff and building our airplane on the way down. You know what I mean? So and I, and I appreciate that. Yeah, definitely. I think it, and I think that's really important for everybody to recognize. Right, for sure, for sure. Once again, Startup Nation, we're talking to Kara Golden, the founder and CEO of Hint. And if you want to try uh, Hint, go to drinkhint.com. We have a link there in the show notes for easy access if you listen to the replay on the podcast. I was uh, 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 gracious, uh, so happy to get uh, a case of Hint this morning. A uh, shout out to your team member, uh, Kara uh, K. Lim, who kind of hooked us up with that. I really appreciate appreciate uh, that for sure uh so uh let's go ahead and continue so I-, I wanted to ask you this because you know speaking of hint you know you were trying to solve a problem for yourself and it just kind of blossomed from there kind of share a little bit about that if you don't mind sorry I did cut out there for for oh, a second what was it sorry uh speaking of hint you know you you, you were kind of solving a problem for yourself and it just kind of the idea for the company just kind of blossomed from there you always uh refer to yourself as an accidental entrepreneur kind of talk about that a little bit yeah so i i never really like i wasn't that kid that said one day i'm going to start my own company right. and i know there are entrepreneurs out there that knew from the beginning but um even when i was actually you know starting the company. I didn't even know that this was something that I was ultimately going to be embarking on. And so um, I think that for me, it was always around solving a problem around health. And I had a huge addiction to diet soda. And when I realized that this, you know, this 
need, this addiction that I had to diet soda was actually causing me health issues, including I had gained a bunch of weight and I had terrible adult acne and my mm-hmm. energy levels were down. Right. I wanted to fix it. And so when I realized that the sort of missing piece was that even when I switched to plain water, it was like a chore. I would think about it every single day and I just you know, wasn't exactly sure how to kind of get through it. And finally, I, you know, started throwing fruit and water. And I was <laughs> frankly shocked that this product wasn't on the market that was just water and fruit in a still version. And there were some carbonated versions that were out there that right. were not using real fruit. But, um, but I think like the key thing for me was just like seeing that, you know, I had this idea and this vision for a water that didn't have sweeteners in it. And there were a lot of people that might not have been challenged with a Diet Coke addiction like I was, but with a, um, you know, some sort of health issue that they wanted to fix, that it would be better for them to be drinking water. And um, that's when I just said, like, I I feel like I'm kind of being gifted with, Mm. with something that I need to ultimately go do. And so that's really how it began. For sure. For sure. Thank you for sharing that. And I know after that process, you decided to start the company and and you and your husband, uh, you know, start trying to figure out, you know, shelving shelf life. And you were getting a lot of advice from uh, many different people. You you talk about the story from the the Coca-Cola executive uh, where he's giving you advice and he called you sweetie. And when I read that part in the book, I was like, oh, no, that sounds bad. So if you would kind of talk about, you know. Uh, those days, because I remember in the book as well, where, you know, you and your husband are trying to figure out, you know, how to increase that shelf life. And he came up with a lot of stuff like we can't do this. We can't do that. And you asked what well, probably the best question that probably, in my opinion, has led to the, as much success in your company is like, what can we do? And I think that question was just so powerful. Kind of talk about that if you don't mind, Kara. Yeah. I mean, I think it, you know, going back to my, my poor parents, like, you know, they, they led with no so right. often as a, as a parent and I would be like, okay, but what can I do? Right. You know? And so I think I started that conversation at a very young age. And so of course my, my poor husband, um, you know, inherited that. Mm-hmm. And, um, so whenever he would say no and know that I was, you know, really wanting to do something, he, I would say, okay, well, what can we do? And so that was really, you know, that was the beginnings of it. But yeah, I mean, you know, we were trying to really develop something that was, my husband joined me early on, I think, because I was writing huge checks off our personal bank account and he was getting a little worried. And, and, um, basically at that point, I'm, you know, trying to figure out how do I actually produce this product, which was fruit and water and no sweeteners and no preservatives. And, you know, it was really, really tough to figure out how to do it. And I think, you know, ultimately we just decided until we could ultimately figure it out that after I asked the question, well, what can we do? He was like, well, we can, you know, just have limited product in stores so that it doesn't, you know, go bad. And, and like, maybe we'll just keep working on this and trying to figure out ways to actually get it, you know, to ultimately work. And so I think, you know, that's a story of not only, you know, trying and knowing that, you know, eventually maybe it will come, but also, um, you know, just the support system too, of, you know, like having somebody that actually, you know, it's tough when you're a visionary, right? Absolutely. Where, um, where people are saying like, I've got this idea and filling your room, whether it's your husband or a friend or somebody that actually, you know, wants to tackle the problems with you. And, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day, but right. I think you start to figure out, okay, well, what can we do? And try and figure out, you know, band-aids and fixes to ultimately be able to do and have a goal. Um, you know, to figure out what you ultimately will end up doing. So I think that that's the, that's the key thing in that. 
For sure. For sure. Thank you for sharing that. And I want to, yeah, totally. No, for sure. I, I, but I want to go back to the, the conversation with the Coca-Cola executive, because I imagine, you know, being a woman, being a successful entrepreneur on that path, you had to face some difficulties that probably men don't have to face. So like maybe having a, a condescending, you know, conversation from time to time and stuff like that. You know, and I'm the dad of, of two daughters you know, who are, you know, trying to find their own trail, their own path and, 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 and do what they want to do and pursue their own dreams. I guess what I'm, I'm curious uh, to know is like, as, as their dad, what role do I have? What, what, what can I do to kind of help them uh, kind of prepare for that eventuality of maybe condescending conversations and stuff like that? Yeah. I mean, I think that, look, I think that the best thing that you can do, there's a few things, um, you know, first of all, like lead by example, right? Sure. So, you know, that's, so share stories about, you know, cool women that you're working with or somebody that, you know, works on your team or, you know, really showing how, you know, you're supporting gotcha. them and, and, you know, and how you appreciate them. I think like sharing those kind of stories, but in addition, I think, um, you know, also, also just making sure that they're doing, they can do whatever they want to do if they set their mind to it gotcha. and they need to go try and they need to keep pushing forward. And, you know, those kind of messages, I mean, what if you actually like lived in a house where you're hearing, you know, your parents say, oh, that's impossible. You're not mm. going to be able to do that. Right. right? L like you'll stop. You won't even try. Right. Right. And so I, I think like those messages, they'll get they'll have plenty of people who will tell them those messages. But instead, be their guiding light, be their, you know, that be that person that that in, that initiates the conversations around trying. And I think like that's the most important role that you can play. Gotcha. Thank you. Uh, for sharing that for sure. Care, we got about three questions and then I go ahead and let you go. I appreciate your time once again. Yeah, today. totally. For sure. For sure. So uh, I want to ask you uh, really quickly because, you know, talk about when, you know, you saw Diane Sawyer, you know, on on TV kind of take a hint of that Blackberry hint water. And, you know, it, talk about the, that that feeling you got, but also talk about like, oh, man, we have work to do. Because I imagine because what I think I've, I've always noticed about successful entrepreneurs is like, even though they have moments like that, there's never this sense of I've made it now I can stop working as hard. Kind of talk about that if you don't mind. Yeah, I mean, well, the Diane Sawyer, you know, one was was surprising to us because, I mean, Diane Sawyer, like for those of you who don't know, she was at used to be, you know, the head person at Good Morning America or right. the head person that you see um, at Good Morning America. And, you know, like she just seems so huge to us. And, you know, when we got this opportunity, when she was actually came to the um, one of our big trade shows, um, the fancy food show and, and saw our product, she was like really excited and loved it. And she was going to talk about it as like one of the products that she saw at the, um, at the show. And we were super excited about it. And at the same time we were doing, um, we had met another entrepreneur who had started a site, um, called hungry girl. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and she was really building a community around, um, at that time, like super healthy, um, products and, um, and, you know, really like was kind of a no name person at right. that time, you know, and was not, you know, that well known, but what she had done was really developed a community of people that ultimately, um, you know, loved what she said and she was an influencer before they were even calling it influencer. And so we were somewhat fascinated because she's, you know, definitely not in our mind, like as famous as Diane Sawyer, but she was able to, you know, drive a ton of traffic to, right. um, to hint. And ultimately the sales were even bigger. So I think it just goes to show you, you just, you know, again, have to try, you have to try different things and what's going to work for your brand and what's going to work for your product. And, um, I think that that is just, that's been our mantra all along. Like, you know, it, it doesn't, you don't necessarily have to 
um, be on Good Morning America or the Today Show, even though those are awesome and we've been on there since and, you know, they've done really well too. But sometimes these little nuggets, you know, that are out there and these sort of what appear to be sort of no-name brands and smaller audiences may actually help you to achieve what you're looking to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you uh, for sharing that. So uh, I want to ask you really quickly, you just kind of go back a little bit, you know, because as we're, you know, your your book launches today, once again, Startup Nation, that book is undaunted. Uh, once again, we have a link there in the show notes for easy access for you to purchase if you're listening to the replay on the podcast. And it's actually uh, close to kind of Veterans Day, if you will. And in your book, you talk about um, working for a, a very famous uh, you know, U.S. Senator there in Arizona, one that I deeply uh, admire, John McCain. Kind of talk about some of those things that you learned from him uh, and what fascinated uh, you about him. Yes, yeah, so I started working for John actually as an intern when I was in high school and right. I continued kind of like varying hours through college. And, uh, and you know, the interesting thing was, I'll, I'll never forget it when I actually interviewed with John for um, this internship, he was sort of the final interview. Right. And he said to me, um, so why do you want the job? And I said, okay, so here's the thing. My parents are Republicans and I want to figure out if I'm a Republican or not. And, um, and like, he just started laughing and he said that that's the most like honest, transparent answer you know, everybody's going in and telling him how great he is. And I was like, I'm here to actually figure it out. And so I think like that was like my first lesson in, you know, really being, um, you know, authentic. Right. And right. really telling people um, like how, why you truly feel the way that you feel. And that's OK um, to do that. And and so that was like one thing. And then I think that the other thing I think about a lot is you know, there was a, a time in particular where um, Martin Luther King Day had become, you know, a federal holiday right. and Arizona had not actually um, uh, decided to observe it. Right. And so I was, you know, there during that time and I asked John, like, hey, like what, you know, what's going on? Like, right. you know, like how come you decided to, you know, vote it down and, and not observe it? And, you know, he gave me a, a bunch of blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, that's I don't know. Like, it just doesn't really seem right. Gotcha. And um, and I and like he could tell that I really was not in agreement with him. Mm -hmm. And he said something to me that. I was, um, that has stayed with me for a long time. He said, um, listen, like just because you're not quite a Republican yet, or, you know, you're, <laughs> gotcha. you're, um, I, I can't remember exactly how he turned it, but he said, we're still good people. And sometimes you just have to agree to disagree. Right. And I, and I was like, Okay. I mean, I, I wasn't in a position to change his mind. I did my best. Right. But what was interesting is years later, I think it was 2012, he actually backed down and apologized for that decision that he had made. Mm. And, um, and so, of course, I was sitting there, you know, watching it on TV saying, yes, finally, like he, he came around to his senses. Right. And, um, and so anyway, I just, I thought that that was a pretty interesting story. And, you know, it took him years to figure out that it was the right thing to do, but maybe somewhere in there, I actually influenced that, you know, decision-making process. We'll never know. But, um, but anyway, so that was, um, you know, those were some of the key learnings, but, you know, I think that holds true today that, you know, just because somebody is in a, has different political beliefs, it doesn't mean that they're necessarily bad. And I think you just really have to look at, you know, as another one of my bosses said to me, actions speak lo louder than words. And I think like that's the most important thing that I still, you know, adhere to today is that you really have to, um, you know, figure out what people are about by their actions. Absolutely. No, it, it, it may be safe to say that, you know, you may have kind of influenced uh, that that turnaround because, you know, when you talk about it in the book, you seem like he really respected, you know, you know, who you were, even as a high schooler you know, how you were honest and being transparent. So I don't know. I feel like you might have some hand in that. 
And I appreciate the advocation as well. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's also just, you know, not being, um, I think by being authentic too, that you open up good dialogues right. with people as well. And I think, you know, oftentimes I feel like I've been in, you know, great situations, whether it's, you know, working for McCain or later on, I ended up being a part of a group called NACI that was mm-hmm. um, helping to uh, build entrepreneurism in the U S and, you know, I think again, like I've always showed up, shown up, you know, not sort of kind of feeling necessarily that I deserve to be there. Right. And right. being authentic in sort of what I will do um, and what I can accomplish. But I was also there to really learn and really understand um, lots of things. So I think coming at things with like, you know, sharing expectations that you really want to learn as well, like you don't have all the answers is OK. For sure. For sure. Thank you for sharing that. And before I ask the last question, I just want to say thank you so much, Kara, for uh, coming on the show again. Once again, Startup Nation, the book is Undaunted, Overcoming Doubts and Doubters. We have a link there in the show notes for easy access. If, you want to, if you're listening to the replay on the podcast, also check out the Kara Golden Show, the podcast. We have a link there uh, in the show notes as well for easy access if you listen to the replay on the podcast. Uh, but Kara, I'm actually going to turn the microphone over to you because given everything that's going on, people are feeling a little discouraged, feeling a little down, uh, kind of give us some words of encouragement to take us out for the day, if you don't mind. Yeah, I think that the key thing is, is, you know, really live life knowing that everyone has doubts and everyone has doubters and, you know, people have failures and, and, you know, fears. And I think that the most important thing is to get up and go try. And, and I, I fundamentally believe that if you really do get out there and, and start trying and, and finding your passion and doing something that you really want to do that, you know, you'll, it'll lift your spirits. You'll start to feel good about, you know, the move forward and, you know, whether that's joining a company, starting your own company, starting a new sport, whatever it is, I think like that kind of motivation um, to go do those things really just comes from leading with a mindset of I'm going to go try. For sure. For sure. Thank you so much. Awesome stuff. And that's going to wrap up this session of the Startup Life. Once again, we want to thank the founder and CEO of Hint, Inc., uh, Kara Gold, for coming on on the show. Thank you so much, Kara. Thank you so much. As always, Startup Nation, if you have an idea, be about that life, the Startup Life. If you want to let us know what you think about our show, have an idea for a show topic, or would like to advertise on our show, send us a message on the Startup Life Podcast Facebook page. And while you are there, like and follow our page as well. It's a great way for us to engage with you, Startup Nation, and really grow our community. The link is there in the show notes. Subscribe to the show as it can be heard on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, or even on your Facebook timeline or any other platform you like to get your podcast. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts and you find our content valuable, please give us a five-star rating as it will help us climb the charts and help more people find our show. You can also listen to the show on the Startup Life Podcast new website. There you will find the all-new startup blog where I write on many topics that are interesting and helpful to you on your path to entrepreneurship. And hey, If you have an idea, be about that life, the startup life.